and it's made a difference. I want to say just from streaming alone, I was able to save about $50. So wow. that gives you an idea of how many I was subscribed to. That can cover your new power bill increase it, that we're going to oh have here gosh, in don't, Las Vegas. Don't remind me. <laughs> what is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse bouge Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to The Perfect Bite. This is episode 82. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and there are so many great choices at Makers and Finders. Next, we're talking about how you can recession-proof your finances. And finally, we'll share how eating chocolate can boost your brain power. So each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant we hope will become your new favorite. And this week we're sharing one that I really love and keep thinking about, Makers and Finders. It offers Latin comfort food and is known for their coffee and brunch dishes. And there's three locations now, one in downtown Summerlin, Henderson on Valley Verde, and the one I went to is near downtown Las Vegas across from the Arts District. It's off of Charleston and Main Street. Um, Makers and Finders describes themselves as a vibrant, upbeat restaurant coffee bar where specialty coffee, Latin food, and culture are the pillars. And I really feel like that's true. You go in, there's these really cool murals on the wall, uh, just a positive environment. Yes. Like positive affirmations. You just feel, you just feel good going in there. So I am still thinking about the dish I had last time I went. It was the Power Lunch Bowl, which is gluten-free. It's grilled chicken, roasted baby carrots, asparagus caramelized mushrooms and avocado with Spanish rice and black beans. And I felt very healthy (laughs) eating all of those delicious vegetables. And just the chicken was delicious. Even the rice was really flavorful. It was really good. Uh, I know you've been there before, Crystal. Yeah, um, I went there and I thought about actually getting the Power Bowl too. That looks really Mm -hmm. delicious. But what I ended up getting were the empanadas. And that was based on their social media posts, um, doing my little bit of research. Yeah, That's quite a few all on the menu. I saw was mm-hmm. empanadas, empanadas. And I can't remember what it was like, empanada Wednesdays or something like that. Oh. But there was one day, and I don't want to – it may not be Wednesday, yeah. but <laughs> one of the days of the week is like a special day, and you get like a special deal. And so I was like, well, I got to try the empanadas. Mm-hmm. So I did a beef empanada, and it was delicious. I'm not having cheese, so the empanadas, I was like, I don't know if I can have – if there's cheese inside there of There was them? no cheese that I could see, um, hmm. but it was like just filled with beef. And then there was a dipping sauce that did not look like it had any kind of dairy products in it. Hmm. Whatever it was. Check it was that out. Because I was thinking next time I go, there is a vegan empanada hmm. that I was thinking, well, that would be safe for me to try. But I'm not sure about the what else was in it. But I think it was a, a bean. Okay. Something beans yeah. inside. Or the avocado toast or the chili chilaquiles, which... Actually, I just want to order everything. So they, it all looks really good. Um, lots of options. Again, it's sort of like coffee bar meets, I don't know, brunch spot. There's just lots yeah. of different options for everybody. And especially if you have someone who's eating plant-based or gluten-free, lots of options for that as well. So it's all just delicious. Oh, you forgot to mention how much you paid for it. Oh, that's right. I think the Power Bowl was like $15, yeah, I want to say. Yeah, right. That's about how much my empanada yeah. is. So um, I, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't know how much their coffees are, but I think it's just kind of how much things are now, right? Like a lunch out is probably about 15. That's, yeah. That's what it was. All right. If you have a recommendation for a restaurant or dish for us to try, send us a message at the perfect bite at ccculb.com. We would love to hear from you. Next up, we'll give you four tips to recession proof your finances. I think we can agree that recent price increases have forced us to adjust our spending, whether it's gas, groceries, or a night out. And while... I was going to say we were just talking about that. Yeah. Our our budget for eating out, even like fast food, has been crazy when we have especially big families. And yeah, it's very easily seen. Grocery shopping is not the same. Mm -hmm. I feel like my dollar is not stretching as far as it used to. Even eating out, I'm having to like adjust my budgets. Like here's my two bags of whatever, $100. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's really sad. Um, And so, you know, a lot of it we don't have control over. But one thing we can control 
are our habits and that we can try to adapt. Um, so hopefully it'll help us prepare and get through it um, a little bit easier. So we've got some tips for you on how to help your budget go a little bit longer. Um, the first one, and I feel like we just keep drilling it into you, but tighten up your budget. The most important thing that you can do right now is take control of your spending. So one way to get started is by tracking your budget and your spending. It can be a little bit tedious to get it started, but it really does make a difference. Once you have a solid idea of where your money is going, you can look for places where you can make cuts. Uh, this is something that I did recently do because of everything going up. I went and I you know, listed out my... Um, my streaming services. And I looked at really, you know, what shows am I looking at on these services? Is it, does it make sense for me to be paying, you know, all of them? Can I cut some because I'm not watching anything on those um, platforms anymore? And so I did do that and it's made a difference. I want to say just from streaming alone, I was able to save about $50. So wow. that gives you an idea of how many I was subscribed to. That can cover your new power bill increase it, that we're going to have oh, here. Gosh, in don't, Vegas. don't remind me. <laughs> Um, another one that I even found was, um, uh, my daughter, she had, um, has an Amazon Kindle or she had one and we recently switched her over to an iPad, but I was still paying for the Kindle monthly mm -hmm. service. So I was like, why am I doing this? That's $6 a month that I can save. And so canceling that right there. So just list out what you're, where you're spending and, um, see where you can make cuts. The next, um, recommendation is to pay down your debts. So you can pay off your debts completely. Consider consolidating with a fixed rate personal loan through a credit union or another low cost lender. Those are some great options. Um, or even just reducing your monthly payments will reduce your chances that you'll default on loans and hurt your credit score. It can be really easy to, you know, miss a payment here and then all of a sudden your score drops and then it affects you in the long run. So stay on top of those. If you can consolidate, definitely check that out. Like we mentioned, credit unions, sometimes we can offer like a, a consolidation loan specifically with a set term. So it's not a revolving line. You have a set day when it will be paid off. The next recommendation is to try to pad your emergency fund. So if you haven't done so already, open up a savings account separate from your checking account and then put away as much money as you can each month. Maybe it's $10, maybe it's 50, maybe it's a hundred, but try to prepare for any upcoming possible emergency. Um, it'll help you out in the long run. And then, um, I, sorry, real quick. I yeah. would say even have another savings account. Mm. That's like, that's like the don't touch emergency yes. one. And then maybe you have another one that, that you use more, but that's what we have. We just have multiple savings accounts and there's one that's like the do not touch it. <laughs> you know, yeah, putting that yeah. money aside, that's the emergency one because it is easy to kind of intermingle those accounts sometimes if this isn't like a clearly designated separate I emergency agree. fund. And I think one of the benefits, at least for a credit union that I know of, is you can have multiple. I could have five savings account under my membership if mm -hmm. I want to, and you can label those however you want. So maybe one it's for house emergencies, another one is for car emergencies. Medical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So save for the future and keeping your money separate from your checking is very important so you don't accidentally spend it. And the last recommendation we're going to share with you guys is to keep your credit score at a good rating. So one of the crucial parts of keeping your credit score at a good rating is having open communication with your lenders and your creditors. If you find that you're running short on money, you know, reach out to your lender before your loan is due. One thing that I've done in the past is uh, request a skip a payment on my auto loan payment. You don't want a, a late payment showing up on your report. So reach out to your lender. See if you can skip it before it actually goes late. That way you stay in good standing um, and your loan does not default. Most lenders would rather keep your accounts in good standing rather than write them off as a bad debt. And then plus, when you have a good score, you can enjoy the benef benefits ranging to better car insurance rates and less expensive loans. And that is another reminder. Call your insurance companies. See where you can get savings. Now we're going to take a break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $73 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.6 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately and insured by American Share Insurance. Next up is our future self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. I have some very good news for chocolate lovers. Eating moderate amounts of dark chocolate may benefit in many ways. I've heard this before, right? I have too. That dark A little chocolate bit of chocolate. Is 
better than mm-hmm. like regular chocolate. Yeah, I'm basic and like milk chocolate though, so I, know. <laughs> I don't love dark chocolate as much. But it does matter the the kind of chocolate you're consuming. We can't just you know go grab a candy bar and <laughs> and be like, yes, I'm getting all of all these benefits. Yeah. But the right kind of chocolate consumed regularly can even help your cardiovascular system. It can keep your mind sharp and alert, and your mood calm and happy. There's compounds in chocolate like polyphenols. They've been extensively studied and are thought to be responsible for most of chocolate's therapeutic effects. I'm, there's a couple other factors here in chocolate. I will try to say them correctly, but we'll link to this article that came from University Health News and make sure that you can go out there and justify all of your chocolate consumption <laughs> when you find out all of the good benefits. So um, the health benefits for chocolate really can affect your brain. One is it affects your mood. Chocolate has been shown to improve depression and anxiety symptoms and to help enhance feelings of calmness and contentedness. Um, something in chocolate is a flavanol. They're, it's believed to play a role in chocolate's mood-enhancing effects. In a recent review of eight studies, it assessed chocolate's effects. Five showed an improvement in mood. So it's not just that it tastes good. There's actually some chemicals in chocolate that, I believe that can improve your mood. I believe that some days, like... If it's like a really stressful day, and this is just for me, some days I'll have like a really stressful day and I'm like, oh, I really need a soda, like for the caffeine, or I really want some chocolate because mm-hmm. I just know it's going to calm me down. And so I believe it. <laughs> and now you're, you have the, Justified. the, the science is backing <laughs> you. Um, in another study, healthy subjects felt calmer and more contented after consuming a daily dark chocolate drink. Mm. So I wonder if that could just be like a dark hot chocolate, which you don't see that no. as often, but I wonder, yeah. Something to invest in, mm-hmm. keep in the cabinet. Let us know if you guys have one. Uh, number two, it affects your cognitive function. The flavanols that get absorbed when you consume chocolate penetrate and accumulate in the brain regions involved in learning and memory, especially the hippocampus, according to researchers. And it increases blood flow to the brain, promotes the formation of new neurons. I mean, all these good things just get in your brain, kicking it up in gear when, yeah. you, when you have chocolate. So um, I think I need some chocolate. Um, (laughs) So the key is it has to be the right kind of chocolate. So choose a good chocolate or cocoa powder and then consume moderate amounts regularly. Dark chocolate is a high percentage of cocoa. So 70% or more is what they were using in this, these studies has a lot of these beneficial um, phytochemicals. On the other hand, chocolate that contains little cocoa has a much less therapeutic value. So yeah, milk chocolate is out. Okay. Definitely dark not chocolate. white chocolate. That's nothing. I, I like <laughs> the dark chocolate covered peanuts or like raisins. So okay. That's usually yeah. I I'll justify that's giving me some like protein from the yes, from the exactly. <laughs> peanuts. So let us know if you're also a chocolate lover and if you have that dark chocolate drink. We'd love to try it. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.